And I forgot to shut everything down afterwards. The bill consisted of multiple thousands of euros. Simply run the following script for my terminal and could make you go broke for each access denied response I'm getting from these. We all love AWS, the first mature cloud provider that powers over 33% of the computing power of the internet, period. Without cloud providers like AWS, startups wouldn't sprout as they are used to nowadays. Bootstrapping small ideas to fulfill your creative mind would not be possible and even if not affordable enough to give it a shot. All of this with pretty fair and well-monitored pricing that keeps you up to date with your spendings. But what if your costs are skyrocketing in such a velocity that it is already too late if you show up to check them? Is that possible? The landscape of AWS AWS consists of over 200 distinct managed services and the number is growing by the day. Most of the web is built upon three key managed services and these are EC2 VMs, CloudFront distributions and buckets from the simple storage service or S3. Amazon tends to have the most fair pricing policy in the world right now. I myself once used AWS's SageMaker for a deep learning project when I was studying at the university and I forgot to shut everything down uh -huh. afterwards. The bill consisted of multiple thousands of euros and the charges have simply been waived after I explained that I am a student and I just forgot to shut it down. Now imagine you create an empty private S3 bucket in the region of your preference. What will your AWS bill be in the next morning? Pretty predictable, isn't it? Bucket names are globally unique and only you know your bucket's ID. So what's the worst thing that could happen anyway? A few weeks ago, I won't make a full lot of myself because I can't pronounce the name anyway, this guy began working on a proof of concept for some kind of document sharing service. He created a single private S3 bucket in the EU West 1 region and uploaded a few files on it for testing. When he checked the AWS billing page only two days later, he couldn't believe his eyes. The bill for his S3 bucket usage was over $1,300, resulting from 100 million put requests executed in just 24 hours. Where were these requests coming from? Remember, bucket names are globally unique and there can't be namespace conflict. The worst part is that S3 buckets by default have no logs enabled that could help to investigate how the requests came in after enabling the monitoring for his bucket, he came to know that there were still thousands of requests coming in by the minute. These requests were originated from multiple accounts within AWS and outside of it. Have hackers been smart again? Why would third parties DDoS a uh, random, private, almost empty bucket? It turned out that a popular open source tool, and we can't name it here, had a configuration with a placeholder for the bucket name of the backups. Bad luck that it was exactly the name of this existing S3 bucket. I mean, the requests weren't successful and were blocked as unauthorized access attempts. But now it gets nasty for him. AWS charges you for any kind of requests on your buckets. Not only the legit ones, but also the unauthorized ones. That is, if you would now send me the name of your existing S3 bucket, I could simply run the following script for my terminal and could make you go broke for each access denied response I'm getting from these and wouldn't even need an AWS account to do so. But there's more. If you would leave out the region, AWS would by default target their primary region US East 1, redirect you to the original region of your bucket and even charge you extra for this redirection. But how would I know your bucket name. Is it even that dramatic? You remember that S3 bucket names are globally unique, don't you? Let's say I have a bucket that's named iHunt's YouTube Statistics and I have a web service running that dumps my latest stats in real time. Now I decided to delete that bucket, which makes this bucket name available again. Some other YouTuber named Ihan, trust me there are many of them, one day has the same idea and creates a bucket named Ihan YouTube Statistics. Now let's say I'm the same mindless guy that I was back when I was at university and forgot to shut down my real-time data stream service, which still tries to put data into a bucket named Ihan YouTube Statistics. This other AWS customer named Ihan will now face a tremendous amount of put requests that are denied against this bucket and consequently gets charged for requests that didn't even benefit them. I mean, if they were really upset about it, they could make their bucket public and grab all my precious data. So it would have been a lose-lose situation. There are solutions to this. One may consider to put a CloudFront distribution in front of it and securing it with a web application firewall or AWS WAF or use some kind of AWS shield or things like that to save you from DOS attacks. But let's be honest, you will have even higher costs by doing this. I think the most simple solution to harden yourself against these kinds of coincidences and bucket name enumeration is to add a random suffix to your bucket name. By simply adding eight random digits at the end of your bucket name, you can make it 2.8 trillion times more secure. And this seems like the best solution for it. So stay woke. Misconfigured open source tools are creeping. Go check out my other reports about the latest exploits of open source and big tech if you haven't yet. Because if you stayed this long, you want to know what's down there. Take care.